Before I get started on this one, I'm not podcasting episode, I want to make sure that if you are interested in the world of cannabis and the business of it, and we want to know how it ticks and how it really, you could, like, to get a good education and understanding of the world of cannabis and the industry that it is, I recommend highly that you go ahead and check out my program, which is featured every week, Blunt Business. You can find it, I think it's every Wednesday at CannabisRadio.com or wherever you find your podcast. So I host that show, tens of thousands of downloads a month. It's got a great audience, and we really talk to some of the best of the best in the industry that are really growing in the industry from various areas. So you get to learn a lot about a lot, because that's what I want to do is I'm learning a lot about the cannabis industry, and that's why I like to talk about it. Because again, this is what I don't get to talk about on Blunt Business. I I don't bother, because I'm doing interviews regularly. But here... I like to talk about the other areas of what's going on without putting on cannabis radio because I don't want to put necessarily my opinions too much on that show. But I could be a little more opinionated here because it's my programming. So the New York Times reports post-election date, besides what happened with the presidential election, which I'm not going to talk about, what is more important that people need to pay attention to is what happened with cannabis. Oregon has decriminalized small amounts of heroin and cocaine. So hard drugs are now fines and not arrests or jail time. And four states overall legalize cannabis. Now, in the story, they say that there were 38 statewide citizen, initi- citizen initiatives being decided across the country. About half the level of the last presidential election. So in the story that now, they say that the march to decriminalize drugs moved further across the nation despite continued federal prohibition. Now, Oregon is now the first state to decriminalize small amounts of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, and other drugs. And in New Jersey, South Dakota, Montana, and Arizona, they decisively passed laws legalizing adult-use cannabis. So cannabis is now available to, I believe, it's 39 states in the country. And it was also on the ballot in Mississippi. If all the marijuana measures pass, marijuana will be illegal for, legal for medical use in three dozen states and recreational use will be allowed in 15. The Oregon measure makes possession of small amounts of what have been considered harder drugs a violation so, or ticket, similar to a traffic ticket and no longer punishable by jail time and allows funds drug addiction. It also funds drug addiction treatment for marijuana tax sales taxes. Now, possession of larger amounts could result and misdemeanor charges and some cases that rise to what is considered a commercial level could still be charged as a felony. So you really got to be pushing it if you're going to do it. Separately, Oregon voters legalize psilocybin, known as magic mushrooms, for people age 21 and older. Proponents said the move will allow the drug to be used to treat depression, anxiety, and other conditions. And those are some of the things that happen here. Now, think about this. This is where I come from with this story. Because I concern myself, and this is something I'm going to talk about on the Blunt Business Program, I want to find somebody to talk to me about how they feel. If there's any kind of a pushback from the cannabis industry where they feel like if hard drugs are going to be considered in a state like Oregon, which is very progressive, they're one of the first states to legalize adult use cannabis across the board, much like Washington State. I believe that was the second and third states, respectively. And then California came after that. Colorado came first. But the thing is, when I see all of this, Oregon really pushing out there. Again, magic mushrooms, some hard drugs. And I think some people, you know, again, it's not like they're pushing back on the manufacturing of these drugs. But what they're doing is saying, okay, you get a ticket if you're holding it. So there's a chance for people to go ahead and find social help in order to do treatment. Per se, my problem is that will the cannabis industry feel concerned because will hard drugs be tied in with cannabis and will the media establishment, the corporate media types, the ones that broadcast or their station and headquartered in New York, Washington, D.C., you know, will they do something here in order to really push the board that, oh, this is big weed along with big drugs and then create the drugs are bad war on drugs thing once again, which is a bipartisan issue. So that's the question here. Would it preclude, would it delay 
a possible legalization of cannabis across the board on a federal level. Now, we already know that the MORE Act, we talked about this on a previous episode, that is going to be pushed up into December for a possible vote in the House of Representatives. We don't know how far it will go, but again, it's political posturing at its best. So it was decided they're going to do that, and this would be decriminalizing for marijuana offenses, which is fine, but again, it doesn't go as far enough as it should because we still have to consider how we want to have interstate commerce of legal product, not illicit product, which is what's happening right now. So what's happened is that, you know, the illicit market, if you go to Florida or Georgia or anywhere, just anywhere around the country, what's happening is there are some people that are buying legal wheat or legal cannabis, and they're just illegally just being able to take it across state lines to other areas, and that's what's being sold illicitly, illegally. So dealers can go anywhere and they can get quality product, whether it's quality vape pens or quality cannabis, quality plant, flower, and they can do that now. So they're getting better product on the illegal market, but that doesn't mean that the taxes are not being taken out of it and that the companies are not making proper money or they're going to be blamed for it because their their labeling is going to be on that product. So these are the things that people have to worry about. It's like you want to make it so that there's legalization, so there's a controlling and trafficking, a controlling and, and a manufacturing and a commerce system made and a financial system in place with compliance and all the other things that are going on so that cannabis can be put around around the country. We don't want to see the same thing with hard drugs because, again, there are also controlled substances. And the fact that you're going to use psilocybin to be able to go ahead and make that work for certain conditions in the same way. It's kind of the same idea as what they would say hemp or like peyote or something like that. The other hallucinogenics where they're being allowed so Oregon has opened the door to other arguments that can be made by an out of touch, an ignorant, stubborn, and undereducated, low propensity media to come in and just destroy the narrative that's being put out by the cannabis industry for a long time, for over a decade. So that's where we are now. And I don't want to see 25 years worth of advocacy and you know, the push to get cannabis legalized around the country, there's been so much progress made. I'm afraid of what will happen if the hard drug argument becomes something where other states try to consider it, and then cannabis is somewhere tied or lapped into this by the media because they'll do it. They don't care anymore. You know, the corporate media, they're looking for clickbait. They're looking for ways to get things out there. They know that cannabis is a, is a choice subject. I know I talk about it because it is a choice subject, but I'm on the side of supporting the legalization. And again, as you know, I am a supporter of States Act. I want federal oversight, you know, take it off as a controlled substance. Let's get it out there and let's tax it, regulate it. And distribute it and sell it just like alcohol or tobacco. Let's get it like that. Why not? If you want to do something where you have methamphetamines or cocaine or heroin and you want to make them, you want to have the argument to have them out there, well, then don't just take it and decriminalize. No. Go fight with the FDA and go find a way to go and get them descheduled or scheduled lower so that it could be a controlled substance and it's no longer prohibited. If that's the fight you want, that's the fight you take. Because we don't need people actually manufacturing or creating it. Those are homemade products. And for the most part, I don't know a lot of people that feel like that they're actually helping more than they're hurting. We know there's benefits to cannabis. You go, should go find out for yourself and read about it. Like, it really is not that hard. Or again, listen to my Blunt Business program at Cannabis Radio. You'll find out more about what you need to know. And with that, I'll talk to you next time.